guys? Guys? What the? Guys? Hey, hey, assistant coach, how are you guys doing? It's me, Jamie Sports, and welcome back to the Crystal Palace career mode. And this, my friends, is not episode 40 theater. It also isn't 40 femme, it is 46. That is apparently 46 Norwegian. Last episode, someone told me the wrong number in their language, or they might have trolled me. I don't know what happened, but I just wanted to correct it in this episode, so thank you very much. Fanta Orangen official. I appreciate your comment right there. Let me know in the comments down below what is episode 47 in your language and this time get it right, please. With that being said, welcome back to King Jovic. Last episode, guys, he has torn apart our opponents and I'm so happy that he has returned into the club. I genuinely miss this guy. His finishing is out of this world at the moment and our team is doing really well. And the fight between Shoya Nakajima and Trossar goes on. Here's a comment that made me laugh so much. Enoch Aisha says, Oh, okay. You want to play, play Trossard, huh? Let me show you what I can do. I mean, that comment right there. My man, you got it. You got it. I'm surprised that it only has four likes on it. That should have a lot more likes on it, in my opinion. But, uh, boys, I am very happy with the way the Crystal Palace career mode is going at the moment. I gotta admit, man, this formation, yes, it might not be the best defensively, but offensively, we destroy our opponents right now. And it's looking very good. For the player of the month, we have to focus on Jovic. He has to get the goals in every single game. I need these objectives to be done. In terms of objectives, boys, we are currently on... Everything is the same. The only thing that keeps on changing is the double trouble right now. And we had a big change in the last episode. Five goals added in in the double trouble. We went from 16 out of 40 to 21 out of 40. Jovic and Zaha contributing very nicely in the last episode. Both of them, when they play together as a pairing, our team is as at its uh, most dangerous state, and I love that. Now, in this episode, we're going to start off with a match against Real Betis in the Champions League. If we can win, we secure our position in the Champions League knockout stages and that is something I desperately want to do. I'm really looking forward to it. So, Real Betis, we're going to get go into that game in just a second. But let's talk about a few comments right here. Here's a comment coming in from Toffee Fan. He says, Johnny, what do you think about the rumors of Rafael Leal potentially joining Everton? Now, first of all, before I even talk about all this, oh my God, I forgot the most important thing. What kind of a YouTuber am I? I forgot to ask for likes. Guys, guys, what the... Guys? Guys, um, can you please hit that like button on this video? <laughs> Just go ahead and hit that like button. Forget about what I said before. Hit that like button. Yo, Kahraba has six goals. Dude, that's insane. I'm so happy for him. He was such a good talent back in the day. Now he is on six goals in the Champions League ahead of everyone else. That is pretty impressive if you ask me. But um, <laughs> my friend right here, Toffee Fan, is asking about Rafael Leal potentially joining Everton uh, before I bottled that whole thing right there. Um, I think that would be great. Uh, Rafael Leal would be great, but it would be sad for someone that I know, uh, Cenk Tosun. It would be terrible. My dad actually has gotten a shirt from Cenk Tosun signed from Everton. And he, he said, do you want it? And I was like, no, <laughs> because I'm a Liverpool fan. But then again, I am also a Cenk Tosun fan, so to say. It's just unfortunate that he plays for that team. But that, that shirt, I could never wear it. So it wouldn't have a place in my videos. And I don't know, I just said no to it. My dad kept it. He's probably going to keep it uh, for a while. Um, so that's okay. But yeah, in terms of Rafael Leao, I think it would be a great signing. But I think it also would mean that Jenk is not the main striker that they're planning to go with. Which is a bit sad, but Rafael Leao is a very, very talented player. So I wouldn't mind seeing him come into the Premier League. Then the next question about in real life football is, do you think that Liverpool can win the league ahead of Man City? Can we do it? Yes. Will we do it? Possibly no. In my opinion, Manchester City at this moment in time, if everyone is fit, their team is the best team in the world. I don't think there is a better team in the world. And I'm talking about team. I'm not talking about individuals. Yes, Ronaldo and Messi can sometimes produce absolutely unrealistic moments in their games and they can just carry their team by themselves. But if we're talking about a unit, about a team, 
when fully fit, I think Manchester City beats anyone in the world. But I haven't seen Manchester City yet on the big stage against the big teams like Barcelona, or like Real Madrid, like Juventus. That is going to be interesting. So uh, in terms of the league though, obviously anything is possible. I would love for Liverpool to win it. If I had to choose between Champions League and Premier League, I would 100% go with the Premier League as the title for Liverpool. But I think it's going to be incredibly hard. I think it's going to be easier for Liverpool to win the Champions League title than it is to win the Premier League title. But that's just my personal opinion. Let's jump into the Champions League ourselves right now. King Jovic is back. Nakajima is carrying his position right now. He is on fire. But then Trossard, will he overtake that position? Let's see what happens in this episode. I'm excited. Let's get into the gameplay. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. I'm loving it. Oh, that's a good cross, Tierney. Ooh, Shoya. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. That's the thing with Shoya, man. He is always back there defending. Like, he is always in position to get it done for the team. And I'm very happy about that. The same goes for Tigankov. But no one from our attacking players defends as well as Shoya. Despite probably being physically the weakest out of all, Strakosha with a massive save right there. I would love to get a victory right here to secure the Champions League position. Because, um... Obviously, we're playing against Bayern Munich after this, which could turn into a game that is unnecessary to play, which would be great because I don't want that much pressure on that last game. I want our team to go into it very calm and collected with no pressure on them, really, knowing that we are making it through to the next round. Joao, Sander, captain! That's, that's what you get. When you take shots from Sander Bergen from outside the box, you're not going to score. And we're going to start the counter-attack with Shoya Nakajima now pushing forward. This could be something special if we play the right passes. We do. Here we go. Joao. Jovic. Jovic has a little bit of space. Let's try this long shot. I love his shots, man. I'm so confident with the shots of Jovic. If I green time that one, that turns into a very nice goal. And also, by the way... If you guys are playing FIFA, to use the mechanics that have been given to us this year. The timed shooting, I know that regular shots just don't work. So just use the timed shooting to your advantage. It's going to make the game so much easier, man. Ever since I switched over to like forcing myself to taking time finishing on all the time, it really helped me in terms of my results so if you guys are playing FIFA and you're not really enjoying yourself because you're losing too many games and you're not able to finish your chances 1v1 which is like the most frustrating thing Strakosha you absolute freaking beauty he's going absolutely mad dude the first save was incredible and then he saves it at the near post that has to be the best goalkeeping I've seen on FIFA 19 so far I'm not even kidding Strakosha has genuinely earned his place in this team man he's a big part of this squad and Connor Morgan will have a tough time to take over that position but yeah going back to time finishing just use it Starkosha has already made six saves within the first half they have taken six shots on target seven now Real Betis completely taking over this game taking control and not letting us do anything in terms of attacking. Our defense, thanks to Strakosha, has been all right, but we need to turn things around in the second half 100%. Things can't go this way. Joao Felix is already a bit tired. I need to work on his instructions. I feel like he's running uh, back too much. He's not really staying in his position. Zaha, great stuff. Zaha, Jovic. Oh, yes, that's how you start a second half. What a strike from Luka Jovic. He is the one. He genuinely is the one. And I'm not even kidding. If Liverpool cannot get Timo Werner because he will join Bayern Munich, I want Luka Jovic. I genuinely think Luka Jovic would be a perfect player for Liverpool. What a strike that is for then Firmino to drop into the camp position. That is an absolute beauty of a strike on the five-star week foot. That's what you want to see top of the net. That's, that's just amazing. This guy is incredible. Also guys, I've been thinking about FIFA 20 for a while. I've been thinking about what we will be getting and um, what would actually change things. Now, obviously apart from the min potential, I think the best thing they could do is like player to coach interactions. It would be great if the players come in with messages and you can interact with them. And depending on how you interact with them, their form gets, um, gets affected. 
and then their form should actually have a massive impact on, on how they perform. So let's say my Sander Berger is on great form and he's normally 84 rated. He should be 86 rated when he's on great form. When he's on bad form, put him on an 82 rating, right? Something like that, in my opinion, would make the career mode so good because it would help to like make more decisions instead of just putting in the same starting lineup over and over again i think it would be great to have like a form system that actually impacts the gameplay and not only the gameplay when it's simulations because at this moment i think the morale or the form that you see the arrows don't really do anything the only thing that they do is when you are in simulations apparently that's what i heard it helps to win games in simulations so Hopefully, form and morale will be something that actually does um, does have an impact on the gameplay next year. I really hope so. FIFA 20, I have high hopes. I have really high hopes now that the journey is uh, finished. I'm really hoping for big changes. I think um, quite soon, um, not quite soon, but anytime in the near future, the FIFA 20 beta should be accessible or we should be as game changers we should be able to test the game anytime soon at some event from ea oh unlucky there joao felix um that's something that i'm hoping for that will happen so um then we can maybe see some of the improvements and i can give you guys a thumbs up or a thumbs down based on what i'm seeing i mean obviously i won't be able to tell you guys any details but i can probably give you a thumbs up or a thumbs down i'm guessing Oh my god, no. Dude, I just scored a volley with Sander Berger. <laughs> Sander Berger, our captain, has scored a volley from outside the box. Look at this. This doesn't make sense. <laughs> he actually hit it with his shin. I don't think he hit it with his feet. Look at this. No, he actually did hit it perfectly. I green timed it, and that's probably the only reason as to why I scored this goal. And I cannot put enough emphasis on this. If you guys are playing FIFA, green time your shots, because then people like Sander Berge, who would normally never score a regular shot from outside the box, turn into beasts that can score first time volleys. It does have a big impact and it does create some amazing goals. If you guys remember in the Notts County career mode, we had the most insane goal with Breno Fernandes after an El Tornado flicking it up twice and then hitting it from outside the box on a green timing. That got us the best goal of FIFA 19. So um, if you guys want to score something like that, definitely get into the timing stuff. Also guys, do you think I'm going to say it? Should I say the two words that start with a C and an S? Because every time, every time I say it, I bottle it, right? Should I say it? Or was C and S already enough for me to go ahead and concede? I'm not going to say it. Let's see. If I don't say it, does it not happen? Because if it's that way, I'm not going to say it ever again. I'm going to have a clean sheet out of this game. I can't wait to concede now. I'm going to have a clean sheet, boys. We're going to get it, right? That This is the time. This is the time where I say it. It actually happens. Oh, this could be a goal from Zaha. No, he doesn't get it. Oh, no. They get one last chance. Oh, no, 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 stop it, yes, oh, clean sheet, clean sheet, clean sheet, clean sheet, game, what up, I'm gonna say it multiple times, you didn't take it away, you didn't take it away, now, here's the deal, though, it doesn't really affect any of the objectives, because the clean sheet objective only works for the Premier League, so... Who's the fool now, Johnny? Uh, I guess it's me. Another thing right here, boys, and this is something very important to me. I don't know if you guys know about this, but Article 13 has been passed by the European Parliament. And um, I know a lot of you guys that are watching my videos are quite young, but just to like make it clear, in about two years time, if this, if nothing else happens, if nothing changes from the way it is right now, we will have no more YouTubers, no more FIFA, no more gaming content overall. We will all be screwed as YouTubers. So I am really scared about my personal future. I This is my dream job, man. I've worked for this for over six years. I've, I started my first YouTube channel in like 2010. And ever since then, my dream was to become a YouTuber. My dream was to have an audience that I can put content out to and let them just watch them enjoy it. That was something that I always wanted to do. And now I'm in a great position to do what I 
love to do and I really wanted to do this and it's about to be taken away from me and um yeah it sucks man it's it, I, I I guess you could you could like compare it to a a football talent I would say I'm a YouTube talent right now I'm not already an established figure I personally see myself still as a talent because I honestly don't believe that the amount of subscribers that I have right now is the maximum for me I I think there is so much more room to grow so much more so I I see myself as a talent let's say I'm a football player I'm a big talent I play at a decent club and all of a sudden I have a career-ending injury and all the potential that I had is gone. That That's basically what's about to happen with YouTubers. And it sucks. It really sucks. One thing that we know for sure is we, you and me, we will have at least one year. One more year of good content and no copyright issues. And another thing that I'm thinking is it's basically impossible for them to implement the type of regulations that they want to put upon social networks. I think it's going to be very, very hard to come to an agreement on what kind of upload filter filters you will need to have. So I'm thinking this whole thing kind of crashes down. A lot of um, young people start voting and hopefully um, politics will turn around once again and um, go in our favor because uh, internet the way it is will never be the same if it continues this way so if you guys are not aware about the whole article 13 thing please go ahead and google it or type it into youtube it's going to help you to understand what this whole thing means but yeah man i'm just a young player with potential to be special and i have a i have a career ender ending injury right in front of me and i'm running towards it and it sucks dude it really really sucks so hopefully that doesn't happen hopefully i will still be here for years to come i'm genuinely planning for 10 more years on youtube this is my dream job i want to continue doing this and hopefully they don't take it away from me that would absolutely suck overall it would ruin my life quality because i personally love watching content creators all day long i don't know what i would do without all these videos and streams so yeah hopefully that doesn't happen man article 13 you suck now going back into the career mode guys we are currently in that first position crystal palace has been quite dominating in the league right now in terms of defense we are four goals uh, away from manchester city we need to improve our defensive stats and we will be playing in a 4-1-2-1-2 narrow for the first time with getson fernandez at center midfield this is going to be an interesting game we have milivojevic in there who we obviously are chasing an objective with Millie mayhem hopefully we can get it done and this is also a match where Trossard can show his worth. Nakajima didn't score or didn't get an assist in the last game. So this could be a big moment for Trossard to prove himself against Everton. Everton currently are in the 14th position with 14 points so far. Let's see what we can do with our reserves team. This will surely be a very, very challenging match. Here we go into the match against Everton. We are playing away. It is raining. This will be an interesting game to play. Top scoring teams. Crystal Palace is up there. Manchester City is trying to catch up. I still see them as the major opponents in this season. It's going to be interesting though to see if Spurs, if you guys remember the last time we played against Spurs, their team was ridiculously bad. Um, if that team somehow changes their lineup in the future, if like an injury occurs, if that causes something in the game to pr put the proper players into the starting lineup, that's going to be an interesting thing to see. But I saw Dembele right there. I think that's the one from Olympique Lyon. He is now playing for Everton. All right, then Trossard, here you go. This is your moment to shine. Can you prove your worth? Luka Jovic has done it in the last match already. Sadly, we can't use the first team right here. Um, that would have been quite useful for the objective of the double trouble. But those two dudes are doing fine. It's not even halfway through the season. They're currently on 21 out of 40. And with the current form that they are in, I'm expecting them to continue performing. Gets on Fernandez. I just wanted to smash it into top bins with the first time shot. Good header. Andreas Pereira brings it over to Cavaluin. Cavaluin back into Milivojevic. Milivojevic, Trossard, Trossard against two or three defenders Trossard still going Trossard shoots good defending from our opponents and also the former sick defender for us I heard though from you guys that he apparently is uh, playing for the Spanish national team now so that's cool it's nice to see that one of the talents that we have brought in is actually turning up on the big scene 
Calvin Lewin. I see you there. Mili. Mili on the ball. Waiting for the right pass. Is he going to find it? No one is really getting into a position for him to pass it into. There we go. Mili gets it back. Into Getson. Getson on a yellow time. Unlucky. Unfortunate finish right there. Militao. Here we go. Pushing on. Pushing forward. Calvin Lewin. Nandez. Nantes brings it back. Cavett Lewin. Beauty of a pass into Trossar. He can't get to it. It was a greatly uh, accurate pass, but we couldn't really get it into the feet of Trossard. It was a little bit too much pace behind it. Hold on, though. Cavett Lewin pushing on again into Trossard. Trossard gets past the defender, takes the shot. I mean, he didn't really get past him. Hermoso over to Andreas Pereira. Pereira brings it back. Oh my god, that's an amazing pass from Pereira. Trossard hits it. And we get a pen! We get a pen right before half time, boys! Jimenez has taken out Trossard and he desperately wants to take this penalty. And I think he might actually have one of the best. I mean, that's not really a penalty, is it? Oh no, hold on. I should give this to Milivojevic. We need this for the objective, boys. Oh yes, oh yes. Uh, oh yeah, dude, my fiancé will have to do my makeup. Oh no, we're definitely not doing that. We're taking this penalty with Milivojevic. Yes, come on, let's go! 3 out of 10. I completely forgot about the objective. Dude, uh, not the objective, I forgot about the forfeit. If I don't get 10 scorer points with Milivojevic, I will have to do a video where my fiancé does my makeup. No. No, hell no. Number 69, puts it into the back of the net. Pickford didn't know what he was doing. I even didn't know what I was doing. But there we go. It is a goal against Everton. And it is a goal for the Millie Mayhem objective. I like that a lot. That is great. Thank God I remembered. Because if Milivojevic wasn't on that penalty, I probably would have taken Trossard. Whew. Got lucky there. By the way, guys, um, I mentioned that I will be starting a new Not County like career mode in uh, like two weeks ago, I think. Um, I didn't do it because I had to go to Germany and stuff and things didn't really work out the way I wanted to. So um, I will be starting a new Road to Glory career mode in uh, on Sunday or Saturday. I'm, I'm actually aiming more towards Saturday. So let's see what happens. I'm really hoping that you guys will enjoy it. I think it's going to be a really good one. And I think it's going to be, um, again, different type of content that we normally don't see on the channel. And I really enjoy those types of Road to Glories that just go a little bit quicker, but still are very enjoyable to play. And where Youth Academy players have a big say in what we do and um, how we play. So uh, new Breno Fernandez is will be found in that career mode. As Dembele smashes it onto Conor Morgan. And also, what are you doing? What am I doing? What am I doing? Kick the ball away. Yes, Johnny, you learned. You learned to clear the ball instead of passing it. It only took you 20 years since FIFA 98. But it's cool, dude. It's cool. Finally, you learned. Milivojevic. There's a lot of space down the right for Pionesisto. And what a strike. That's what I call a timed finish. This is what the CPU does. That is incredible. That, I mean, I don't even know if any goalkeeper would have saved that. I know it's near post, but the fact that it had, sh had so much power on it, it just was unsavable for Conor Morgan, in my opinion. L unlucky guy, really unlucky. But it is 1-1, and again, the clean sheet is gone. What a surprise. Haha, <laughs> it's gone again. I keep conceding. I'm so bad at defending. Oh, that's a good ball into Richarlison. He can finish with both of his feet, so we got to be very careful with that type of players on the ball. But we do bring it over to Andreas Pereira. Andreas Pereira to Cavett Lewin. Down to the right we go. We have Dodo pushing forward. Dodo brings it back in. Cavett Lewin doesn't get this. Ah, we got it into Sarachi. He has scored a goal for us in the past. Come on, why can't I switch players? Nandez. Gets on. Gets on, come on. Gets on Fernandez. Oh no, what am I doing? That's just stupid. Andreas Pereira. Andreas Pereira gets taken out in the penalty area. Great tackle from Everton's defense right here. Come on, Trossard. What? How does he push me away? We got it, though. Milivojevic. What a big steal. Cavett Lewin. Late minutes. Cavett Lewin. Oh, ref. Ref! Referee! And that's a foul! It's 1-1 against Everton. I'm not happy with that result at all, man. We had a great performance against Real Betis. And as soon as we switch over to the reserves team, this formation, I don't know if it works for this team, man. 
I'm not too sure because I feel like the midfielders that we have, they are not dangerous enough. Pereira is good and all, but Getson Fernandez, Nandez, and also uh, Milivojevic, not really the most threatening players. And I feel like Cavett Lewin doesn't fit into a 4 1 2 2 because in this type of formation, you need a striker that can pass the ball. Trossard can do that. Cavett Lewin, not so much. And I struggle to play 1 2s with those two. You guys know how well we do that with Jovic and Zaha. With this team, we can't pull it off. And Manchester City has won. So it looks like City will be, I think, two or one point behind us. I'm not too sure. But the title race is getting quite interesting right now. We have two points to Chelsea, three points to Manchester City. We are making things very interesting in a very unnecessary way. Crystal Palace needs to perform better in the league. We need to stop conceding goals, man. It's just not good enough. And I've seen a comment saying that I don't train my high potential players. I train these guys every single week. These specific ones, they are being trained every single week because these are the only ones that still have that arrow, I think, and the rest doesn't. So I try to focus on these lads. Oh, guys, we have a training injury. It is for Jovic again, but it's only three days. Yes, let's go. Jovic, is he like, is he injury prone or why is he getting injured the whole time? Because, ah, oh, man, he can't even play. What the hell is he? Hold on. What am I doing here? What the hell did I just do? Uh, let's go back again. Let's calm it down. Um, is he injury prone? No, he isn't. So why is this guy getting injured the whole time? Dude, Jovic, stop it. Premier League player of the month, November shortlist, Wilfried Zaha and Jovic on it. Please, Zaha, don't steal it. Don't steal it, Hazard. Don't steal it, uh, whatever his name is. William Jose, I think it is. Please, just give it to my boy. Give it to Jovic. He earned it. He's the only one that should be getting it. I need it for the objective, man. We don't have that many months left. We need to get it this time around. Now, we are up against um, Newcastle in the Carabao Cup. I'm going to be simming this one. Hopefully, it can be a good result. I'm simming this because I'm too anxious to see who's going to get the player of the month. Luka Jovic and Zaha are both nominated. If Zaha takes it away again from Jovic, I'm going to be so upset. Calvert Lewin scores. Let's go 25 minutes in. Traore scores as well. It's 1 1. Newcastle come back into the game. Please, please, come on. Come on, Crystal Palace. Yes, Trossard. Let's go. Let's go, man. Amazing. He's stepping up in the simulations, man. He's doing bits. And yes, we have won this game. We are through into the next round of the Carabao Cup. That was quite a risk to take, really. I don't know why I'm doing this type of stuff. But I'm sometimes, like, especially in the Carabao Cup, in my head still, there's something that says, I don't care about this cup. I don't care about this cup. But I have to win it for the objectives. Updating facts and figures. Game gets stuck. Cool story, bro. But we are about to see the player of the month anytime soon, boys. Let's see, there should be a nomination. You should be able to see it right here in the shortlist. Zaha and Jovic on it. If Jovic doesn't get it, EA, I'm gonna fly over to Vancouver. I'm not even kidding. You guys have to give me this one with Jovic. It doesn't say anything yet. Now we are up against Watford. I need to sim two games in, a, in this month. I could get rid of them immediately right now. I have Watford at home. I have Southampton away. Liverpool at home, West Ham away, Burnley at home. I'm going to sim the one against Watford, boys. I think that's that's probably the best thing to do. And the good thing is we can sim with the first team and then we can play against Bayern Munich with the reserves team because the result doesn't really matter. But this one actually does. Crystal Palace on 32 points. Chelsea have overtaken us. Manchester City have lost their game. We need to use our chance right here. We need to run away from Manchester City because I think at the end of the season, that is going to be the team that we have to beat. Oh, Chelsea have beaten City. 3-0. Okay, boys. Against Watford. Step up. They have won against Spurs. They have won against Bournemouth. This is going to be a tough game. But I have to sim two games a month. And we could get rid of them straight away in the beginning of this month. So let's see what we get right here. Spurs 1-0 up against Liverpool. Seems like they're finally turning up. Leicester City 1-0 up. Zaha scores a pen. Let's go. Come on. Zaha scores. Great stuff. I should probably put Jovic or one of the Benfica players onto the penalties as well. Joao Felix! Yes! Okay. Great stuff. Let's go, Joao. Nice. So that means this month, maybe, we will have to focus on Joao Felix. 
Has Jovic won the player of the month? Has he gotten it? Please. Come on, man. Yes! Go on! Yes! He should have three by now, EA. He should have all three player of the month rewards where he was nominated for it. You freaking jokes. This is what needs to happen. You need to reward the players that earned it. And Luka Jovic got it. Benfica's Academy Objective Boys won out of three two more months and there's not many left as you know we only have these months left we have december we have january february march april and may so it's gonna be hard we have one two three four five six months and in two of them we have to get the player of the month with uh one of our players so it's going to be very hard. It's going to be very hard. But if Jovic continues performing like he does, and if Joao Felix this month especially steps up big time, we are looking at a good result in the player of the month rankings. Zaha is already in there. He He's fighting for it, despite knowing that I need this objective to be done. But I'm very happy with that result. Next episode, we'll be here, boys. We'll be ready for the game against Bayern Munich now. Um, if you guys want me to play it, let me know in the comments down below or if, if you guys just want me to sim it and uh, just get past into the next round, no matter who we play against, it really doesn't matter if we are first or second because if we want to win the trophy, the only thing that matters is to beat the next opponent. It doesn't matter what kind of opponent it is, I really don't think first and second really makes that much of a difference in the game of FIFA. In real life, obviously it does, but in the game of FIFA, I really don't think so. But let me know, boys, player of the episode this time around. Who am I giving it to? I think I'm going to give it to Sander Berger for that amazing volley that he scored. I'm going to give it to him, boys. He is doing the business in that CDM spot and he has grown to 85. Thank you so much for watching this episode. I love you guys. Have a great day. Hit that like button before you leave. Subscribe if you're new. Take care. Peace.